Hi, in this uh, tutorial I'm going to show how to use Nuke Studio to batch generate a set of proxy files, which is typically done at the beginning of a VFX project. Let me quickly explain why this is done. So within a VFX pipeline, the edit for a movie or a sequence is normally undertaken by an editorial team, which could be a department within a company or even a separate company altogether. Such companies use typical non-linear editing software such as Adobe Premiere, Avid Media Composer, Final Cut Pro. Um, and they're usually working on middle range uh, computers. Um, now the footage that is captured increasingly for film is, is uh, high definition, high resolution, often using cameras that output the footage in formats using codecs uh, that, um, that this type of software just simply can't compute. Moreover the software and the hardware as I said used in the creative editorial it's unable to handle the large size of the media files. So therefore the first role undertaken by the VFX editorial team will be to transcode the native files to a suitable format for editing. In almost all cases this involves outputting low resolution QuickTime files and they stand in for the native files during the editorial stage and these are known as proxies. Okay, so the first part of any project and this is before opening any software is to set up the directory system uh, at the operating system level and this is why what we see here is basically a folder that I've got open which, um, which is my directory for, the, uh, for, for this project that I'm using to demonstrate uh, these, uh, these techniques in this uh, in this like in this uh, demonstration series okay so what we're what we're really seeing here is a simplified version of a directory structure uh, comprising of folders and folders within those and this is typical of a standardized template that would be used by a visual effects company um, and essentially all companies have a template like this that they use on every single project that they work on Therefore, everybody in the company knows exactly where to put the files and where to look for any files that they need on a shop-by-shop -shop basis. Okay, so if I just open up the media uh, in here, okay, um, and ignore the miscellaneous, that's just that I've, uh, I've started to dump uh, some, uh, uh, some media elements in there ready for uh, a later tutorial. Okay. So if we take a look inside these folders, uh, you'll see that um, you'll see that so, some of these folders just contain um, a single piece of media. In this particular case, you can see an animatic, um, whereas other folders like this will contain other uh, other subdirectories. In this particular case, we can see that this is hosting my principal photography. Uh, this is hosting some green screen footage. Uh, this is hosting some stills which are clean plates and various other things. Okay, so uh, so we have folders and sometimes we have folders within folders. So I guess the, uh, the, the first role of the VFX editorial team would be to start populating the native media into into this kind of setup, so we can see in here that these are my uh, these are these are basically standing in for my native footage. These are not particularly high resolution footage. I think that they're uh, I think they're they're 1080 uh, they're 1080 files, so um, they're not uh, they're not big files. But these typically could be um, could be four even 8K uh, files that are that have been captured at high dynamic range using um, image sequence formats like EXR or DPX that uh, that. The, the editorial team just would not be able to process the density of the files and, and their software may not even understand the format that they've been captured in. Okay? But we would, this is where we would store our native files in their native formats. Okay, so we can see that I've, in this particular case for the demonstration I've got three subfolders, one for green screen, one for principal photography and one for stills. And what's significant about that is if I come into the proxy folder that I've created here you'll see it's got exactly the same directory structure. Now if we take a look in here, these folders are empty um, and these are the folders that we're going to populate with proxy versions from the native media. Okay. I'll just quickly go back to the animatic, drag it across. Um, I'm not going to play this, but I'll just scrub through just so that you can see this. Um, and as you can see, this is a really useful resource. It's basically the storyboards, um, slightly pimped storyboards. As you can see, there's a little bit of animation within the storyboard panels themselves. 
um, but this is giving me a great reference for the um, for, 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 for the edit in terms of shot selection and also in terms of the timing so this is great and also it's going to stand in in this particular case for example we've got a shot here that's entirely CG it, it's not based on any principal photography similarly this shot at the beginning of this spaceship coming in and orbiting the earth so these are shots that are entirely computer generated so the animatic these parts of the animatic will stand in during the uh, during the creation of the edit for um, uh, for for the for, because obviously the uh, the visual effects work won't have commenced so these will stand in and they'll provide great placeholders in the edit the editorial team will really appreciate this because they'll be able to use these uh, these little vignettes inside the inside their edit just as placeholders with the full intention that the actual media once it's created will be dropped in in its place but in terms of actually working out the sequential order of the edit and working out how long certain shots need to be on the timeline then this is a great resource okay so I just thought I would quickly just show that okay so I'll just move that out, out, out of the way and we'll now focus on Nuke Studio okay I'm actually gonna uh, just close it down and then reopen it so I'll just pause the screen capture uh, this is gonna look, look a little bit strange because it's actually gonna open larger than the screen capture space um, the, and uh, but I need to open it in it I need to open it from scratch so that you can see how it what it looks like when it first opens so just bear with me a second okay so it's um, it's open full screen and I'm not uh, recording this in full screen um, but I, I needed to open it like this just basically so that I could refer you to the dialogue that opens uh, when you when you first start uh, Nuke Studio so it gives me the options to start a new project or open a new project uh, if we already have uh, new studio projects they will already be listed in here so that we can quickly select them but in this particular case I just want to uh, start a new a new project okay so I'll hit this button and this has given me a, a little clip which is basically the root and that is essentially the new project I'm just gonna pause the screen capture now and just drag the interface into the screen capture area so that it maxes out okay so this is what the full interface looks like now that I've just shrunk it to the screen capture area okay so as soon as we've created a project probably the first thing to do is to save it straight away so I'm just gonna go save as and I'm just gonna save it straight back into my um, into my project and I'm gonna save it into this folder that I've created called conform okay I've got some additional things in here that uh, that, that, that I've just tucked away um, but I, I'm just gonna call this demo dot hrocks uh, hrocks being the um, the suffix the, uh, the file extension for a uh, for a new studio project okay so I'll just save that now and again if I just drag my uh, my project in and we can see now that in the conform panel this is the new studio project sat there okay so that's where it's going to live inside the conform project okay so the next thing I need to do is I need to open the project settings so I select this and choose edit settings and this brings up the project settings dialog okay and you can see there's my file name demo but the first thing I want to do is I need to define the project directory so again I'm just choosing my root directory we can see it there and clicking open there's a few things that I can do in here for example I can set the uh, the default um, resolution and frame rate for a sequence I'm actually going to set that to 25 frames per second because the media in this particular project was, was uh, recorded at 25 frames per second um, and um, the export settings I don't think I need to do anything else in particular in there um, in the export settings I just need to make sure that it's using the project directory, which it is. Okay, we'll come back to this in uh, in, a late, in later tutorials. Okay, so all's good to go in that particular department. Okay, so I'm ready to bring in my native media. So I'm going to choose File, and I'm going to come down to Import Folder. Um, just roll back on that. 
So that didn't work out as planned. So I'll, I'll just I'll just stop that process and do it again. Import folder, and I want to choose the entire native folder inside the media. So that's the folder I want to choose, and I'm just going to choose open. I can leave the pattern um, as is because at the moment we haven't got any nuke scripts or anything like that, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so what it's going to do now is it's going to go through the process of importing all the native media. Okay, and that just gave me a, a few moments just to pause the screen capture, have a coffee and fit, blow my nose, etc. because I'm absolutely full of flu. Okay, but anyway, on, onwards, you don't want to know about that. I'll just open this up and, um, and just switch this to a, like a list format for now. And you can see that Nuke Studio, because we chose the entire native folder, it's actually replicated the uh, the folder structure from the operating system so we can see if I, if, I, if I start to expand these down we can see that this is all the media in so we've got our stills we've got our principal photography and we've got our seven or eight green screen clips okay and this is the entire list when I have the native uh, media selected it populates the entire list okay so we are ready to transcode our native uh, media into proxy format. Um, and the backbone of Nuke Studio really is this powerful export structure which allows us to define what we want to export, the format, where we want to save it, etc. Gives us some great, um, great options. It has a great sort of render token system which we'll be getting into um, a little bit uh, later on. So, as I've said, the first role of the VFX editorial team is to provide the uh, is to provide the actual uh, editing department with the proxies so that they can actually undertake the edit. Okay, so I guess this would be the first post production task. Um, and this is really the simplest and most straightforward export configuration possible in Nuke Studio. Uh, I will be coming back to this later on and and really sort of exploiting the leverage of the of the export system in here. So let's start with the green screen folder. So I'm going to make sure that that's selected. I'll just switch back into the little list form, highlight all those, and these are the ones that I'm going to uh, create first in proxy format. Okay, so once I've got those selected, I go to File, Export, and this brings up the export, um, the export dialog. Really powerful dialog. Okay. Okay, so these export presets, this is probably the best place to start. Um, these, uh, these define the, uh, the, the, the nature of the, uh, of the exporting process altogether. So each one of these has a kind of format arranged. And these are just standard templates, a bit like typical render templates that you might find in, in an editing program. Uh, but we're actually going to start from scratch and we're going to create our own. And I'm going to create three, one for each of these folders. Okay, so... You can see that process as clips is the only option for us in the in the export. The reason for that is that we don't have any new scripts or anything else in here other than other than media, and therefore it doesn't um, it doesn't make any other options available simply because there there isn't anything in the project that would necessitate that. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a um, a preset for my green screen. So I click here to add a new preset, and we can see that it appears here. I'm just going to call it. Uh, green screen proxies save that um, and now I'm going to set this up okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to this export to and we can see that this has got these uh, this word project root inside the angle brackets and this is the first sign that we see of something that resembles render tokens similar to the kind of thing that we'd expect in Maya and other programs uh, where we, which allow us sort of semi-automation of, um, of of a variety of things. Okay, so this was um, this was created when we did the project settings at the beginning in, in the project settings dialog, and I, I told it to uh, I told it to refer to the project root folder. So it's defined in the project root folder, but of course the green screen pro proxies I need to save in a specific place, not into the root. So I'm going to come over to choose, and I'm going to come into my media into my proxies and into my green screen and I'm going to say open 
and we can see that that has actually appended the project root with a directory structure which is basically saying drill down and put the files here. Okay, so far so good. So we now need to set up a path for this uh, for this export. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this plus button and it's giving me file name by default and that is perfect for uh, for for our purposes uh, because we don't want to change the file name we want to create exact replicas of the of our, of our media but obviously we want to we want to capture those in in a lower resolution uh, quick time format or similar okay so file name is great because it's uh, the the you can say again it's in it's in angle brackets which means it's it's using that as a sort of a file name saving convention it just means it's going to use this exactly the same file name we can see that if we hover over this we can see the we can see file name about halfway down there um, and it's a, basically the file name of the media being processed so it will basically replicate that name okay so the next thing we need to do is we need to define the content so what all we do is we click on this and we get a few options you can see there's a few options down here the one I want is transcode images so I click on that and that opens up this panel on the left hand side and this is obviously where I set all my export formats okay so yes we're working in RGB color space I'm just going to choose sRGB because every bit of media that I'm working in within this project is um, is an sRGB file. Uh, obviously, if I was using EXRs, DPXs, and things like that, then this would be different. But in this particular case, I'm not. Okay, working down. The file type I need to save as a QuickTime format, and then the codec. I'll just save that as an MPEG-4. It's a nice compression for this particular project. Remember, the editorial won't thank you for giving them dense files because they need, when they're working through editorial, they really need to be able to scrub through the timeline and see changes in real time. Um, so they're quite happy to actually sort of work with lower resolution, heavily compressed files, as long as they can see what they yeah, they can see the image. Okay, so we know what format, we know what codec. So, uh, so the next thing that we need to do is define the sort of the aspect ratio of the file. So I just need to come into the reformat format and, I, and I'm choosing custom. And that opens up the format dialog. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come into, uh, into this and I'm going to come down to custom. I'm going to create my own. Okay, so I'm working with this at, uh, this is 1080 footage. Uh, but I'm going to create sort of a, um, a half res one. Uh, so I will call it half res. That's completely arbitrary. Um, and I'm going to save it to 1024 by 576. That should maintain a 16.9 aspect ratio. You can see that when I hit return there, it tells me the picture aspect ratio. Add a, add a pixel aspect ratio of 1. It's giving me 16.9. So it replicates my native footage in terms of its aspect ratio, in terms of its pixel aspect ratio. So half res is what I'm going to be going to be using. Okay, so I'll say okay to that. So that is now the format that it's going to be saving. And that is pretty much it. We're ready to roll. So on this particular project now, I can export. Uh, yes, I want to save those changes. And what can we see going on inside here? I'll just stretch this back so we can see. And we can see now that it's working its way through the clips in the green screen folder. This is a, a kind of a, a global percentage running. And then it's going to work through each of the clips. I'm not going to leave this open and um, and uh, and have you sort of watch this process. So I'm going to pause now and, uh, and come back when it's all completed. Okay, so you can see that the uh, the process of um, of exporting is completed. You can see in this particular case uh, that uh, that took almost uh, almost ten minutes. Okay, that will obviously depend on a project by project basis, uh, the level of compression that's being used, and various other sort of things. So typical sort of rendering uh, kind of things. Um, if I bring in my um, if I bring back my project folder now, uh, so we've saved into the proxy format and into our green screen sorry in our proxy folder and our green screen subdirectory and we can see all the files are already sat in here if I just arbitrarily sort of click one and go to properties um, and we can see that they are now adopting the 1024 by 576 um, aspect ratio and they've retained the 25 frames per second so and we can also obviously see that they've maintained the same names 
as the native footage, which is really important for conforming later on in the process when we bring this uh, entire project back up to full resolution. Okay, so I can clear those out now and I can move on to the next one. So I'll do this, I mean this is repetition now, so I'll, I'll do it very, very quickly. I won't sort of explain too much as I, as, as I go through. So again, this time I want to select my principal photography. Again, highlight them, file, export. I want to create a new proxy, a uh, new preset, sorry, and I'll call this principal proxies. So I know this is my principal photography. Enter to accept that. Um, come down to the project route, and this time I want this to go into the proxy format, but this into the proxy folder, but then time into the principal subdirectory. Uh, and again, you can see that that appends the uh, the original project route. I can now add a project path, check its file name so it maintains the same file naming conventions on the proxies. Choose transcode images, and I'm going to set this up just like before. So sRGB, QuickTime, um, MPEG4 compression, reformat custom to open this up, and my half res will still be there from before. So I can go ahead and do that. So uh, so I will um, I'll I will I will I will um, in fact I won't do that just yet. What I will do is I'll I'll just leave that for now. So and I'll go on and create the uh, the preset for my uh, for my stills. So I'll come back to the top here now. Add a new preset and I'll call this stills. Stills proxies this is slightly different. Um, again in the project root I need to send that to the right folder so I need to send it into the proxy folder and into the still subdirectory um, and then the path again I want to use file name and I, used to, I want to transcode but this time I want to do this a little bit different still sRGB but this time I want to save in a, a still image format so I'll just go for a PNG format 8-bit is fine for one for for a proxy setup. Uh, again, custom, and again I can use my half res. So it's going to give me the 1024 by 576 format. Okay, so I can now select my stills and my principal photographies and export those. So I'll just export the the stills now. So yes, and we can see those chugging away errors. I'll have to take a look at that. Sure, they've recorded. Well, they have, but if for some strange reason they've saved out as nuke scripts. So I'll just pause the screen capture, get to the bottom of that, and then come back. Okay, I realise the error. Um, so what I what I hadn't done is obviously made my selection. So I still have the principal photography selected. Uh, so it was trying to apply a stills format to a video uh, a video sort of uh, file so I need to come back to the uh, to the stills make sure that all my images are selected these are obviously the native footage uh, then come to export choose my stills proxies and then export and we should see these chug through and obviously this is just uh, transcoding a single frame per, per image so that goes through very very quickly and now if we bring the media in we can see this is the proxy folder there the stills and we can see it's created these and we should be able to again see if I bring out bring up the properties we should be able to see that uh, these are 1024.576 format okay so I'll clear those out to do this to do the proxies for the principles I just again need to select those um, I've already created the preset so I just go to export, make sure that I've got the right preset selected, and then just hit the export button, and um, and they will they will set on their way. Okay. So I'll just pause the screen capture and restart it when these have all completed. Okay. So you can see that they're all completed. These are all the principal photography files. Again, if we just quickly look at the 
For the metadata, we can see these are all 1024 by 576, 25 frames per second. Okay. So once this uh, process is finished, we can now um, we can now pass the uh, the, the proxy directory. Uh, with the three subfolders and all the proxy media within, we can pass that onto the editorial team and let them get on with the edit. So all I really need to do now is just go to file and save my project and then I can close down uh, Nuke Studio. Okay, if you're working on a project entirely by yourself then obviously you're not passing on any proxy files to any department. Uh, you're effectively assuming the role of that department and then getting on and doing the edit uh, but now you've got the media to be, to be able to do it so the next stage of the process would be uh, therefore in the non-linear editing software okay so I hope you found this uh, initial introduction to new studio sort of transcoding uh, setup um, and um, and the, the you know the useful template system I hope you found that useful Okay, so I'll close the capture here and then we'll move on and look at the process of, uh, of bringing our edit out of an editing software like, uh, like Premiere ready for conforming.